Alrighty, it's been about three or four months since we've done a Q&A, so I figured why not do a q and I asked you guys to give me your questions in the comments of a community post, and I wanted sp a lot of questions revolving around Generation 5 or just My Little Pony in general, but I obviously will answer any question from life, the universe, and everything else in between. So let's go ahead and look at these comments, look at these questions, and start, of course, with this top one right here, posted 32 seconds ago by Clarissa7 here. Do you think Misty will stay with Opaline, Opaline and be kind of like a double agent or will she just randomly leave her to live with the main five? Honestly, it could go either way, but what my th what what I'm kind of leaning more towards is that she's going to start off as like a double agent and then literally in the very first episode, she's going to be found out or something somehow and then she's going to have to retreat and then live with the main five for the rest of the series or something like that. I don't think I think she will try to do the double agent thing, but I don't think it will last very long if they even do it at all, but it's hard to say cuz they could literally do it in any in any way. Uh, moving on next, we have Dex Fartsworth 6000. How do you feel about Shrek? I think Shrek is a masterpiece and almost nothing can top it. I, on a serious note though, with, with Shrek, it, whenever, whenever you like talk about movies and things that you really love and enjoy and stuff like that, you can usually find at least one or two problems with the movie or show, things that you would have done differently or things you wish would have happened differently. But when it comes to Shrek, at least the original Shrek, I don't really see much that could change with it. It's honestly perfect the way it is. There's nothing that I would change. I wouldn't change the soundtrack. I wouldn't change how a character sounds. I wouldn't recast any of them. I wouldn't um, remove this character or give this character less lines or anything like that. I wouldn't change lines. I think all of it is basically perfect. I wouldn't really change much on it. And because of that, you almost have to say it's a masterpiece, right? Because you can't really say that about a lot of things. Even your favorite shows like My Little Pony, Generation 4, Generation 5, or whatever else, you can always find at least a few problems with it that you would love to have done differently, uh, have been done differently. Uh, but moving on, let's talk about Meg Z Daster uh, because they wanted to know what my favorite skin in Ponytown is and what my least favorite Ponytown skin is. I don't really know because that one's, that one's a little bit hard because there is obviously a lot of different characters and stuff like that that I have. I would say just like Skele Bones, but it would probably be a very specific Skele Bones. I'll look through my um, ponies here in a minute uh, outside of this video, outside of recording this, and then I'll put it up an image of it up here uh, in editing and stuff like that. So that's going to be a future Danny problem. But moving on and speaking of future Danny problems, here is a, a post by user OS9... Wow, that's a lot of different letters and stuff. Uh, they asked, so do you think Misty is the main character of Make Your Mark, given that she's the only one to make her mark so far? Um, I, it's weird because, like, I, I said this in my, rev my review of the series so far and stuff like that, that Misty is almost like the main character because she's the only one that has a full character arc, and the story kind of revolves around her in a way because you have Sunny, who should be the main character, completely ignoring the plot. She just keeps doing her own thing in her community, and of course, that's a good thing. She's improving her community and everything like that, but she's not focused or even interested in the slightest of this bigger issue, this threat that Twilight, her idol, no less, warned her about and told her, hey, you need to figure this out and do something about it. And it's, it's just weird. And so I think in a way, Misty kind of is the main character, but that's definitely not the intention from the writers and the creators of that series and stuff like that. It's definitely meant to be sunny, but they just drop the ball on that greatly. Look, I'm just going to say Sakura. They, they said, what do you think of how the term are how the team are telling their story in generation five do you think there's too many with how they are telling different stories in different series what are your thoughts on the main five after the movie and how they were presented in the comics tell your tale and make your mark i this is this is a, a good question I, I i probably should make a whole video just on this alone but generation five is really weird because it's split among many different things now even generation four had a couple of things of course it had the mainline series and then it had the comics it didn't really have anything else beyond that un until like the end of the series where they started doing the weird pony life thing or whatever but in this one generation five is just scattered right now they have the movie of course which i guess is technically part of the main series so we can we can maybe scratch that off but you have the main series over there on netflix then you have tell your tale over on youtube and then you have the comics you have three different 
stories being told at the same time, three different series being shared at the exact same time, all Generation 5. Each of them kind of have their own canon, but they keep borrowing from each other. Um, for example, the main series, Make Your Mark, has borrowed stuff from Tell Your Tale and integrated it into the series in a, a weird, unique way that kind of also still retcons what Tell Your Tale is doing. So it's almost like we're watching three different universes at the same time or something, and it's very, very scattered, and it's just all over the, all over the place. And and the most tragic thing, the most sad thing of it all, is the mainline series on Netflix, Make Your Mark, is actually the worst one out of all of these different ones. Tell Your Tale is doing Generation 5 way better than Make Your Mark. The comics are doing Generation 5 way better than Make Your Mark. And, of course, the comics have always been great, but at least in Generation 4 when we had the comics and the mainline series, they were both really good. Of course, I still think the comics may have been better in certain stories and stuff, but still... Make Your Mark is failing bad. Meanwhile, Tell Your Tale and the comics and all this other stuff are doing great. Oh, and also another thing too is you also have the games and stuff too, which are also telling a story which aren't canon either. So you have that story too, but that one's not something people would typically run into. Um, but I, I think that they're failing right now in terms of like telling too many stories. Uh, you definitely hit it on the mark with that. Sly Moose asked, though, do you also find it weird that Sparky is still living in Hitch's cabinet? I'm surprised he hasn't gotten the dragon in his own little bed yet. Even Spike had one in the treehouse library. It's weird, too. Um, I, I kind of thought about this a little bit uh, a few days ago, like a week ago or something like that. But Sparky is technically the first baby dragon we've ever actually seen. We've seen Spike in Generation 4. We saw him get born and stuff like that. But... In the, in the timeline and everything like that, we follow Spike as he is, like, basically a teenager, right? Because he was hatched when Twilight was, like, I don't know, 10-ish or something like that? Because she didn't have a cutie mark yet. She got it by hatching him. And also, she was going to this special school and stuff like that. I can't imagine they're going to take anyone too old. So she was probably roughly 10 when she hatched Spike. And then, Sp and then we fast forward and we get the, the main timeline or whatever else like that. So Spike is roughly... A teenager in, in the series that we follow. So technically, Sparky in Generation 5 here is kind of the first baby dragon that we've properly been following. Um, and it's kind of weird, right? Because you would think that Hitch would have done something more than kind of put him in a cabinet, which I honestly think is a little bit weird. Um, but I think... I think part of why they did that is because they didn't want to go through the trouble of modeling stuff and doing a lot of new stuff. For example, they they gave the creatures their own little corner in the lighthouse, but in future episodes, it's just not there because they didn't want to bother animating it or dealing with it anymore. They just said, fuck it. It's just, it's there. You just can't see it, basically. And I think they're doing the same thing with, with Sparky living in the, in the cabinet. I think also another reason why they did like him living in the cabinet is so that they can have it be like, oh, he must be in his cabinet. Let me go to his cabinet and then they open it and he's not there. I think that's part of why they did that is to kind of add the suspense of, oh, is he actually in there or is he missing again? Because he goes missing all the time in the series. And that was probably the best way they could tell the story rather than him just moving the blanket and finding that he's not there or something. Um, but moving on, Silent User 69 said, least and favorite pony from Generation 5. My least favorite character from Generation 5 right now is Sunny. I, I'm very... And part of that is because she's just... She's basically a non-character. They're not doing anything with her. They're ignoring every every aspiration she has. She's very annoying. Um, everything... Like, she can... She has, like, this mentality that she's above the law and stuff like that. And I did this when I analyzed Sunny in... Um, after the movie came out, I analyzed each of the characters. And I kind of talked about how Sunny... It just doesn't give a fuck about anyone else at the same time she does she's just like i'm gonna do my own thing and she doesn't care if she breaks laws or does anything else she's gonna do whatever she wants and she kind of has that mentality of i can do whatever i want because my father is dead or something like that right and it's just it's just weird i, I can do whatever i want because i'm trying to bring magic back to the world and she just I, it's it's annoying. I talked more about the character in a video um, analyzing Sunny and stuff like that. I just, I do not like Sunny. That is probably my least favorite character in Generation 5, especially after finishing the series up to this point, up to Chapter 4, finishing Chapter 4. She still barely does anything. And my favorite character from Generation 5, favorite pony, would probably have to be 
um, Misty. I think I think it would have to be Misty. If not, and and it's kind of crazy to say this because this was my least favorite character after watching the movie. But Zip is also a great character <laughs> um, because she's actually actively doing stuff. She's actively moving the plot forward. Meanwhile, the other characters are not doing that at all, and I like that about it. Um, but I also like Pip as well. So my favorite from them would probably be like Misty and Pip and, and Zip. Those are probably my three favorite from, from Generation 5. Now let's move on to uh, the last few questions here. Um, this one from Timey Wimey Brony1432. They asked, do you know who Dr. Hooves is and have you seen the show Dr. Who? Yes, and yes, I know who that character is. They were in Generation 4. I don't believe there is any equivalent to them in Generation 5, although it would have been kind of neat to, to have them in Generation 5 um, or something. Um, or may maybe there is and we just haven't seen it yet. Um, but yeah, and I've also, I'm actually in the middle of watching Dr. Who. I'm like most of the way through 10. We got like one more season left of, of, uh, uh, Dr. Ten, David Tennant. Um, and it's great. It's a great, it's a great show. I recommend that for anyone else watching this, but yeah, that's the answer to those questions. Fishy Tales asked what got me into interested in doing YouTube. And I have to say that I've answered this question so many times in the past. And basically it boils down to some British YouTubers and stuff like that. So there you go. There's your answer. I got interested in doing YouTube by some random British YouTubers. And that's all you need to know, I guess. Lily15678 asked, what do you like about Ponytown? And that has to do with the community kind of, but also more so... Um, there's a lot to do if you really hunt for it, and I kind of like the idea of hunting for these cool, interesting things to do in these games, and doing weird things in video games that you're not meant to do. Um, I found so many bugs and glitches and stuff like that throughout Ponytown, so many that I ended up becoming a tester for them and stuff like that. Um, I, I created so many mini games and stuff like that for the game. I have like over 20, maybe even 30 of these different random mini games and things that you can do in the game. I've made so many videos on it. There's just so much, so much here in Ponytown. But on a base level, there shouldn't be any of that because it's just a chat game, really, at the end of the day. But it's got so many mechanics that work perfectly to create these interesting things, and I think that's what I like most about Ponytown. Um, but there you go. Uh, last one here is Secret Brony asking if I have any cats. I I do have a cat, um, and that's all that's all there is to it. I have a cat, and that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please do leave some comments below if you guys have any other questions or something like that. Maybe I'll answer them in a future Q&A. Um, but as well, if you have any other things you want me to look at in the future, definitely leave some comments below because I'm trying to broaden my reach here and do some more interesting things. So definitely leave some comments for ideas and stuff. Uh, but for now, also consider liking, subscribing, sharing, and doing all of those other wonderful things like that. Because when you do wonderful things like that, not only do you get access to wonderful content such as this, but you also get to become one of yourself. And I think we all want that. So do those wonderful things. And until next time, stay wonderful.